you can't be rapping about um, bling bling and, and nice cars and, and those sort of things. If that is real to you, go ahead by all means. The uniqueness of, of, of hip hop in Africa is still to, to show its its head. Hip hop is not bling bling, gangster ass swinging, pump, blunt smoking, snoop, snoop. Hip hop is not hydraulic low riders, G strings, big budget music videos. Killer dogs, 18 inches, world fame MTV, ODB, and all things jiggy. Hip hop is not disrespecting to women, or those with less power, or less money, or less whatever. I think I was about, I don't know, 11, 12 years old, just listening to tracks. Um, there was just something different. I never heard it before. Uh, you know, you, you had your usual songs and stuff where people are singing or, you know, doing all kinds of stuff, but I, the rap part was kind of interesting to me. I never actually wanted to be an MC. I always wanted to be a breaker for some reason. Um, but, you know, just just with MCing, when I started going to hip hop clubs, you know, I there was just a lack of, of female presence on stage, you know, and the battles that were going on, and there was just this macho vibe all the time, and you sort of felt like if you wanted to fit into the hip hop scene, you also had to be macho, and you had to compete with them on the level that they were on, you know. So I forced myself into it. I always wrote poetry and, and that, uh, evolved into rap songs eventually. Here's the apple of my third eye ripe, fresh from the garden of Eden. Father God me deceiving the snakes that bother my breathing since fate is swallow my meaning. My reasoning when easing in seems hollow when speaking. And so I plucked it directly from the tree of life, indulging in the fruits of my labor. Since food be the savior for such a starving artist, I'll be honest, I'll be modest, receiving my mother's promise. One keeps the aching away, regulating my stress levels in between the base and treble. Even at the eve of destructions, I'm quite adamant, adequate, addict at its best, won't follow where Adam went. So as I clear my throat, best approach with letters note. My man not on this matter shatters that I gather misconception on my anecdote with this hit ill approach when speaking it. I have you scheming for my antidote. Hip hop, you the apple of my third eye. Words I write are just a sample of my gratitude. Hip hop, you the apple of my third eye. Swear to never take a bite with Adam's attitude. Listen, hip hop, you the apple of my third eye. Words I write are just a sample of my gratitude. Hip hop, you the apple of my third eye. Swear to never take a bite with Adam's attitude. The first uh messages that I got from hip hop was all party stuff and you know how bad you are as a rapper and stuff like that you know it was only in I would say 87, 88 that I actually got messages um, that were speaking about black consciousness uh, message, messages that were speaking about ancestry and all of that stuff um, just reflected back to Africa because all, all of the MCs at that time, like the public enemies, the ex-clans were, were talking about being proud to be African. The uniqueness of, 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 of hip-hop in Africa is still to, to show its real head. I mean, you got people like Kainan and um, Tumi who were reared after that like black consciousness mentality, you know. And, but, but both of them sort of worked their way via America back to the fact that they are African, you know, like, but Africans on the continent, essentially if you, if you see like these um, uh, music video shows that are, that, that are on, you'll see that they copy exactly what's from the States and they speak that same language um, which, which capitalism promotes. You know? So there isn't much of a, of, of a diversity in the, in the, in the mainstream uh, perspective, but there's a huge amount of kids who understand um, what, what it's really about, you know, and, and or hungry for information, um, the real information about the culture and this potential to actually empower people not only mentally but also economically if they, if they act collectively and understand that in, in a democracy the masses of people need to act uh, collectively for change to really come about. In dust clouds, that is how we bust out. You can't avoid the rush now. Shut the dirty mouth now. You thought it was a club sound, we're waking up the dumbfound. Chase the K down, they couldn't all our way down. The new drum, marching in. The freedom of expression, you know, there's not, there's not lots of 
uh, um, there aren't in a, a lot of, I don't know, mediums where, where, where the youth can express themselves in, in such a way. Whereas in hip hop, all around the world, you'll find that the youth are very entrenched in it and they really believe in it as a medium to express whatever feelings they have, emotions or thoughts that they might have. So that's, that's what really drew, um, drew me into the hip hop thing. In terms of art, um, like, I do canvas works and, and that as well, but I think that graffiti and street art is more relevant to today's world because you're interacting with people, you, you're part of society, you're taking public space, you can be political, you have a voice. It's interactive, it's not just putting it in a gallery and the art scene kind of just talks to itself a lot, whereas the graffiti is more of a youth culture and it, it, you know, you go, it's an experiential art. Hip hop of course has the five elements, so it's one of those, it's the artistic element of hip hop and that's how, that's the basis of the hip hop package, you know. Um, so I guess it's a reflection of the b-boying or the emceeing within the artistic realm and on the streets, it's street art, it's not a gallery art, it's a youth art, but at the same time I think uh, it's also s removed. Um, there's a lot of graffiti artists who don't, they're not into hip-hop, they're into punk or into all sorts of music and uh, I think a lot of the time you get into it through hip-hop perhaps and then you know that's your introduction to it and then you, you just carry on, it's 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 an it's, its own entity. Marketing, hot dog, bomb drop, you better get your cards up, we got hip-hop, hit them in the weak spot, they thought we couldn't keep up and now we turn the heat up and now we got a big up and now we got a stick up, lick a shot and let them know that it started again when my pen's in men off into the deep end. Intent, accident, big bend, we've been busy, profits of the city. If it were the year, we get them busy. We're not splitting, take it back to the beginning, cause they're feeling what they're feeling. Don't make us start no fires, burning with desire. Turn it into riots, I'm so wired, far from quiet. Don't make us start no fires, burning with desire. Turning into riots, I'm so wired, far from quiet. Represent the issues of the continent. You can't be rapping about um, bling bling and, and nice cars and, and those sort of things. If that is real to you, go ahead by all means. But we've already been told that we're imitating a culture that doesn't belong to us. That, that you know, um, so don't imitate what they're saying as well. Use the, the, the creativity and, and the access that you have to people that need to hear. Um, what you're saying. So many facts, stats, figures and statements, collapsed pictures, a matrix of fixtures, advertising signatures on billboards, not to mention newspapers. I can't even afford to tap into the source of vital information. It's like a multi-corporation wants complete invasion of my senses. I sense this game of rants and sense complain when brands can blend their name and space to setting up new trends. Campaigns offend public and individual expression. Again, my opinion is only in recognition when statesmen or politicians Politicians end up in my position, neutral indecision confronted by critical and analytical judgment. That's typical of liberal minded, right wing, politically biased organizations that fight things over wires. Media controls the desires of the norm, seems as if it owns empires, support their goals by trading in arms and making loans. It reminds me of mental slavery from minds cloned. An MC in Europe cannot talk about the things that I talk about because they're not exposed to it. That's why I'm saying it's the frame of reference. For instance, I, I grew up in a, in, in a Karua, you know, a small town. I could come to the city and, and, and talk about things that are happening there and people would be like, I can't relate, you know, because I grew up in a city, I grew up in Cape Town. That's it's all about frame of references. That's the only difference. And the thing is, uh, because what we have here in, in, in Africa is we have rappers sound like other rappers from America as well because they were all obviously influenced by that. And I, I, I think people shouldn't be afraid to tap into their own roots and their own culture, which is that African culture that we have. And that's very unique because what we find is that um, elsewhere in the world, like America, you know, they're kind of running out of ideas. So they're looking to Africa. The rest of the world is actually looking to Africa for new ideas.
sometimes I may have a song like, okay, I'm writing these for these people, you know. But most of the time, I'm a guy trying to beat myself, so. But it's a story within me, right? And so, if where I'm from is Africa, right? That's, that's already one part. Like, I'm telling you a side of uh, where I come from. I don't have to tell you. You know, it, it's, it's not about, I hear people sometimes like, you know, yeah, I, the streets and, and this and that. Like, I can honestly say I'm not from the streets. <laughs> You know, um, but I can tell you that, you know, I, I, uh, I come from a single parent, you know, like uh, it's me and my mom, my, my grandma brought me up most of my life. Um, you see, it's that story and like, um, I come from a township called Kugulietu and then I can tell you a story that we moved from there, went to live in Claremont and this and that. And, but I don't have to tell you, you know, it's the streets and, you know, that makes it, hardcore and like I'm all, yeah. I don't do that. So when I write and my perception is just the perception of the world, the continent I'm from, the country I'm from, the place I'm from, the city I'm from, it's all of that. And my experience is within that. When we started out, we didn't have a lot of knowledge of who we were. You know, and I think hip hop gave us that sense of identity, uh, introduced us to uh, the books of, uh, of Steve Biko and Black Consciousness um, through like Public Enemy and Cam and uh, um, Malcolm X's autobiography. So, so that search for yourself um, was because of, of hip hop back in the day and also because of the history here in Cape Town of being labeled as colored. So that search for yourself existed uh, way before hip hop got here. So hip hop introduced us to that information. It's the Bang Bang Brigade from the gang run streets where the fort line distinguishes the poor from the rich and the urban junkies party from the township to the suburbs to the beach till the bougie locals summon the police. We create of Cape Fraternity, hustle for the right to live and play both the great colossal models in our brain. Fuck a social economic ball and chain. I'm not a slave, not a martyr. I'm a maverick, prose poetic design artist targeting the global white market with this live shit that I master from the head to the pen to the page. Then again, from the atoms to the mic as I spray like Montana aerosol. Under pressure, I display splend the Check the style, check the flow, our control, making music for the love, for the dough that enables me to travel to your city and your hood to do a show. Yo, I'm a flagship member of this global underground, man. What? There. For me, what is unique about African hip hop is the diversity. You know, as we know, um, besides us having a lot of countries in this continent, in, in our country ourselves, we have nine official languages. What I really love about Hip hop in Cape Town at the moment is the emergence of Afrikaans um, rap, you know, and even within Afrikaans rap, there's, there's a diversity of style within that as well because Afrikaans has so many different dialects. Dominate the millennium, send ten of them to the end place The benevolent go where you never been Seek what they never seen, don't be impotent when looking in Who's that maneuvering, pushing in opposite? Gotta do a lot of work, making you a part of it. Starting at the heart of it. Let, oh, I say, never on the hush, hush, never on the low, low. My dream for hip hop in Africa is uh, firstly that we should be proud of our ancestry. We should be proud where we come from because we have contributed so much to the world um, in many respects. You know, we can go on and on about that. Um, secondly, I would like to see more networking taking place. You know. Um, collaborations with artists um, from across all sectors, not just hip hop, but music as in a general, you know, form. Um, and my ultimate dream for hip hop is that we continue with this collective consciousness that we have, you know, of making the world a better place. A lot of people find it difficult to make that connection, so we, we use uh, the circle 
as an as a, as symbolic of the world and, and telling kids to like move to the center of the circle as yourself, you know. And it's easy to be on the edge of the circle and and uh, act collectively or like skin or talk bad about someone or say something. But like once you're in the middle, that's you. Like how do you present yourself as an individual to the world? You know, in, in order for you to be you, you need to know you. And like you're an African, what do you know about Africa? What makes you proud of being an African?